Hello, this is Dan Humberg from HarvestFires.com. Um, I am generating a video with a CAD system <clears throat> to show how to bend the tin set for a fire stop kit for a John Deere 9760 and 9650, uh, the 50 and 60 series combines that use that, uh, that same engine. It's not for the later 9760s that use the same engine as the 70 series combines, but this is for the earlier ones. Um, I didn't, I don't have a video with me on the bench assembling this tin, <clears throat> and so I'm going to try and do it with the computer to show you how to make the bends in the flat pieces of tin so that you can assemble your kit. We'll also try to show how to assemble the tin in the in the CAD system here, so you can do that on the bench. Um, the parts are in no particular order. I'm going to try and show each one one at a time and then we'll show how to assemble them, I, I hope, in that, uh, that uh, in the computer-aided design system. So let's go to the look at this first part. Um, it's a, it'll be a large piece of flat tin when you, when you get it. Uh, you should be able to, to orient it um, by looking at the cuts and stuff in it. The, where the flanges are and where the where these slots are. These are going to go underneath the exhaust manifold. Um, actually they're probably going to go underneath the uh, combination exhaust manifold and intake manifold on the combine. But And there's some s slots here to allow it to form around things and go around some sensors. There's holes in here for uh, I think the uh, ether line comes up through one and then there's a sensor line, some kind of a temperature sensor or pressure sensor and another one. So this is that part. It's got uh, several long bends. Um, you can see this long flange on top. It's bent up 90 degrees and then uh, this another 90 degree bend here and another 90 degree bend there. So those are the long bends. You got one to make here, one to make along here, one to make here to form it into this shape. And then there's this end cap here um, for bends up uh, to uh, fit around. This is where the um, air comes from. I think the intercooler back into the intake manifold. Uh, this There's a flange on this end down here that looks like it might require a bend, but in fact it doesn't, or the bend is so slight it's just going to fit underneath another piece, and so they kind of overlay each other. Let's see, what else do I need to tell you about it? Oh, one thing is in doing this video, I don't, I'm not, I, I don't have the tools that I usually show on how to make bends. You can watch those on any of the other uh, tin bend videos for the 9770 or any of the other combines. I start that video with the tin, with the discussion of the tools to do it. One of the tools for this one, like with these long bends here, might be something that you want to do, and that's where you take a piece of angle iron about, oh, well, in this case, at two and a half feet would be long enough. And, and then have another piece, either angle iron or strap, with a uh, drill a pair of holes at each end so that you can pinch this metal in the vise between those two, uh, an, the flat on an angle iron and, the, and another flat piece, whether it's an angle or just a flat strap. Anyway, so it gives you a sharp edge where those two meet, and you can put one, any of these bends in the vise at that point, pinch those pieces of metal together around it, and then form the whole thing, bend the whole thing over as a unit. It's not the only way to do it. You can do this by on the bench by pushing the flat surface down on the bench and bending these up. They bend pretty easily on the perforated lines that the laser has cut, but um, but you'll need some method of doing those long bends and you can do it on the bench or I sometimes do it with a simple tool like I talked about with a couple pieces of metal with a I put a bolt in each through each end and keep them loosely together and then I slip the, the flange through there set it in the vise pinch it down with the, the edge of the, my little tool or my pair of, uh, of angle irons or whatever on this line and then I can bend that whole unit over but uh, do that or not, at, at whatever. For a single kit, you can probably just do this by bending it on a concrete floor or on a bench top or something like that as well. So that's that first large part. I'm going to try to get rid of this one now and go on to the next one. So this is a this is a piece that's going to go in on the f oh near the far end by the underneath the muffler, I think. Um, it, again, it'll be a flat piece. You can orient it by probably this hole in this cut line in that in the slot in there. It has flanges around the edge of this. So if you're looking at this face with this, it'll be it'll have a bend line, a perforation line here. And so I've got flange here on the left, a flange on the bottom, and a flange on the right down here. All of those are bent towards me in this case. 
while this big rectangular piece here is bent over 90 degrees the other opposite way and then this little flange, this flange along that edge is bent up 90 degrees so if you look at that part I think you can see how to to bend it to to get that shape out of the flat piece that you have This piece is going to fit um, around that where that um, intercooled air comes back to the intake manifold on the left end. That's what this circular cutout is for. Let's zoom in on it a little bit. Again, it's going to come to you as a flat piece. Um, it's going to have a bend here. So we can, if we're looking at this end, we can see that we're going to bend everything else away from this face around the right hand side. And then if we turn it that way to look at that face, we're going to bend a jog back in here that goes about 45 degrees on this piece and then flatten this one out to be parallel to this face over here. So you get something that looks like that. And then this flange on top bends over 90 degrees. So you can see that part and how it's bent up. Hopefully that makes it easy to see how to bend those. Okay, the next piece, this is a piece that's going to go over the top and split the turbocharger compressor from the turbocharger uh, exhaust turbine. You can probably identify it by this, this side view with that kind of whatever you call that cut out, shape of that bell cut out in it. And if we're looking at that and this tab here, we can bend it by bending these This little L-shaped tab or piece has no uh, bends in it at all, so nothing to do with that one. We'll, we'll figure out where to use it when we need it. This piece is going to go on the end where your uh, muffler exits, the exhaust pipe exits. Let's see, how do we get it oriented so that you can see which direction these bends go. Looks to me like all of, let's look at this face of it. Get it flipped around here, there we go. So if you can get it oriented so you can see this hole in this slot like that in this beveled side, all of the flanges around the edge, here, up here, over here, and down underneath, all of those flanges are bent away from this face 90 degrees. So just bend them over at a right angle. It'll be kind of a box end on the thing. Okay, this is probably the biggest piece in the kit. It's going to have a big, uh, just a big piece of sheet metal with uh, a series of perforating lines. Let's orient it this way. So that you have these little half moon cutouts and slots. These are going to go underneath the exhaust manifold on the right hand side uh, uh, when you're in the hole working on it anyway on the right hand side underneath the muffler in that area. And so we've got a bend here. From that we're going to bend, we have this bent up 90 degrees and then back this way so that these, this part down here and this surface in here are parallel to each other. And we've got a 90 degree wall in between and then the big part of the panel here is bent 90 degrees this way. I guess the easiest way is to look at the end of it like this. There you can see the bends, they're all 90 degrees, a zigzag kind of thing. And then this long flange up on here bends over 90 degrees. So there's, a, there's that biggest piece. This one is what I call the top of the thing because it's going to be the top of the box over the muffler. It's going to be um, go over the top of the muffler and then this flange down here will go onto the right onto the kind of the head of the engine. And this is the hole where our air is going to enter the box to keep the thing, keep cool, clean air in there. 
So this one, again, we can look at it from the end for the bends. It's It's got really just a bend down here and then that flange bent that way, but you want to make sure that you have it so that it looks like this when you're done. So this face with the toll in it is going to bend down away from the big top and then the flange along here will bend out or towards us to be parallel with the in the same direction as the big top up here. This is going to this piece is going to wrap over the top of the exhaust manifold on the left side of the turbo and come back down and onto the head. That's what these flanges are for there. Again, we can look at, well, you can kind of look at the end. I've got a, on this end, there's a kind of a cap, sorry, kind of a cap that folds down here. And there's a flange under, on this, on the end of this piece that bends under so that they overlap. It kind of folds up like a box. If we look at this end of it, you can see how the, where the long bends are in it. There's a long bend that brings this face down. Uh, this one, let's call that, keeping that one horizontal. And then we have this, all of this stuff will be bent down here to, to give you that face. And then these flange pieces here bend back out 90 degrees to be parallel with this, is, which is going to be kind of the top of that part of the enclosure. And these will fit down on the head. So we got to up, over, back down, and out. Uh, the, the long bends produce that shape and then on the end this just kind of folds up this flat this flap folds down and that flange under there will bend in I would bend that one first probably and then bend this thing to, uh, and this these long bends once you have that one bent over anyway that's what you should what it should look like when you're done hide that one Okay. This one is probably the upper side of the turbocharger bearing. That's what this is going to surround the turbo bearing, and it is. I don't know if we didn't we didn't do this one already. I don't think, but it's a box. It's a it's a tray like shape. It has it's flat. Uh, let's see if we can orient you somehow so that we get it right. Looking at this, that the distance from this corner this hole is smaller than the distance from this corner to this hole. So try to get the piece, the flat piece oriented so that you have this distance here to here is smaller than the one over here rather than having it flipped over and having it be the other way around. And once we have it oriented this way then we should be able to do this and get it right. The other key for that is that there's a hole on this flange here that is down near the bottom of the flange and on this end, that hole is farther up. So let's orient it so that this is the smaller distance and you have this little hole in this flange down at the down near the bottom. And then all three flanges, this one, the one on the top here, and the one over here, will bend away from the face that we're looking at. And that'll give you the right shape for the part so it'll fit when we need it to. Okay, I've got two more. Actually, what I'm going to show you is two pieces that actually replace one that we almost started with. I think it was like the second piece had the bottom of the turbo bearing in it. And the reason that um, well, I have it twice in here is I first designed the part and then and the part would fit fine if you could get it in there, but there's no way to fit it in there. So I had to cut it into two parts. And so now we're going to show those two parts. This is the first one, the forward part. Uh, goes towards the actually goes towards the back of the combine, but anyway, it's it's a it's a piece that's going to be small, has a pan handle here, and start at the start of the cut cut out for the turbocharger bearing is there, and then there's like six holes here. We put six holes in there so that you can hit at least one of them when you're putting it together because it's tricky to put this together. It has two bends, a flange here that bends over this way towards us, and this one on the bottom bends towards us. So that's that part and how to orient it. 
I'm going to hide that and we'll show you how to put it together, I hope, in a little bit. And then the, I think this will be the last one. This is the other half of that uh, assembly of two parts. Notice the six holes here that match up to the six holes on the other one. Uh, you don't need to use all those six holes when you put it together. A couple of them would be great, but they're hard to reach, and so I didn't know which ones you'd be able to, so I just made multiple opportunities there to put that piece to get back together. Um, it has two flanges. You can look at it, and, and you can probably see how to orient it to bend it. Um, you've got the pan handle here with the six holes in it, and the two flanges on the edges here bend towards us from this side, or away from it so if we're looking at it from this side and that would be the bends for that part okay now I'm going to try to build the kit uh, the tin set up from pieces to show you how to assemble it on the bench we're going to start with this piece. So that's the piece that goes over the top of the exhaust manifold on the left side. that piece we bent up that way. Let's orient it like this. And now we're going to try and add the next piece, the piece that goes below that. Okay, these would be two pieces that go together. Notice how the flange on the light blue piece goes inside the other one. And you'll be able to tell that by the size of the, the pilot holes pilot holes that are cut here, the larger one is going to be the side where the screw goes through from. And then the, the smaller one will be the one the screw bites into. Similarly, this flap that comes down here will have screw holes that overlap this lighter blue piece underneath and pull it together. Okay, so that's that one. This is going to be one of those two pieces that we um, cut in two. Um, I had, I, I, you'll find that there was one that I told you to bend up that uh, actually you can't because it won't come as a whole piece like that. It'll come as these two pieces. And I talked a little bit about that. Well, this is that piece and where it fits. It overlays with these flanges on top of the two that we just did. It has those six holes down here and it screws on here. Let's put the back part of the second part of that piece on to show how it goes together. Okay, there's that one. It overlaps. That's the only only thing it overlaps is the other one with those six holes, and you have to reach around from the right hand side, maybe with a long screwdriver, to put screws through from here. And if you get two of them in, that'll be fine. This is going to capture the lower part of the turbocharger bearing here and wrap as close as we can around it. This is probably the largest piece in the kit, or at least one of the largest pieces. It fits underneath the muffler and around the exhaust manifold here. Fits, notice it fits inside the flange from the other one, the light blue one there, and uh, fits, fits over the top of this highlighted piece there, and we can screw it together there. There's a hole down here, and that is for the return line from your, I think that's the return line for your oil from the turbocharger bearing to come through. Okay. 
here's the next piece I want to show. This is that piece that right, this is what I call the top. Uh, it goes over the top of the muffler. Looks like it fits underneath or inside the flange from the previous piece because that one wraps over on top of it. And then it comes down onto the it comes down onto the engine head here. But you can put that in place. There will be screws along here that will hold it together for now. Maybe the piece I should have put on before that I'll do next here. I want this one. Okay. Probably before we put the top piece on we should put this one in place. It's the top. That goes over the top of the turbocharger bearing. Looks like it lays over the top of the lower one. And there are screw holes here to put it together on there. It fits inside the rest of this box. The rest of the rest of the pieces wrap around it. So it might be good to put that one on before we put these big pieces on around here that I already showed. So we'll put that one on first or before you put this one and this one on. Now we should be able to do this one. This is the end. And it's it's pretty straightforward. It's got flanges around and it'll slip inside these other things. Um, and have screws that go through there around the outside to hold it on. It's got a slot cut in here because um, you'll have to split it apart in order to fit it around the exhaust pipe here. Kind of torque it, twist it, whatever you got to do. It may even bend a little bit to get it around the exhaust pipe and then pull back together and, and screw in, into these other pieces. But that's the, the end, right hand end. This is the what I call a fill piece along here. Uh, I think there's an oil line or turbo turbo oil line or something goes through here, and that's what that slot is for to be able to slip it around that steel line. You can see the flanges here and wh where they are. Uh, this one it lays on top of the purple one here, so that one will screw on from the outside. The rest of the flanges on it look like they slip inside the the other parts, so that you can put screws through there. So. It doesn't look like it has, you know, it has a flange here. So we got some screws there, but I think we just have a butt joint here. I don't think we have a, any, any screws there. But it, there's some here to put in from the outside through the flange. This one overlays there and tightens this all up. Oops, I'm not sure you could see that. I'm sorry if I got it off camera for you. That shows that in place, and this is this now I think completes the oh I got one more piece to do and watch what appears here there we go this is that little bent up piece that fits underneath the um, air coming back from the intercooler And he's open underneath here. I think you tighten that up a little bit with some tape, but uh, you can. But um, anyway, that fits over the top of this underneath there and should allow you to tighten that up around that. You've got a circular line coming through here, and that's difficult to fit to. That's why we have all these fingers cut in here, so that you can kind of bend them to fit up against that circular line that kind of comes down here at an angle through here. It's both, a, I think there might be an aluminum pipe there, but then there's a rubber fitting that comes in there to, to join these parts. And so we got to tighten that up as best we can because the radiator, the fan blast is coming from the radiator here and we do not want to allow dust to come in that area. So once you have this put together around here and these fingers pressed against that uh, rubber fitting or that airline, then we want to kind of tape this corner up with, the, uh, with that aluminum foil tape to button it down so that we can't get any dust blown into this area from that end. 
Similarly, anywhere else on this on the side from the left here where the radiator blast is coming from, any place where you got a gap at all, you want to try and tighten that up with some of that tape because we don't want to let air in that end. The other end doesn't matter as much. If it leaks down at this end, air, our air is moving out this end and the radiator blast is leaving this end, so it's not going to push dust into this end of the enclosure. But the other end we are concerned about. Okay, that should be the bends and tin assembly for the tin set for a 9760 or a 9660 series or 50 series if it's that earlier engine. And it's not, this one isn't too bad to put on. One of the things I'll point out here is that it is a challenge to fit around some of these sensors and stuff like that. Um, you, you, I, forget, I was showing the, in the installation video how to do it, but it's not always comfortable. You, you just feel like you're forcing it a little bit sometimes, but you have to do that to fit it in there. There are some humps in there and underneath that these things are cut out to fit around. Uh, it should fit because it did for me eventually, but, um, but it's, it's awkward. Sometimes these bottom pieces are a little awkward to get in place, but once you do and get it screwed together, then it'll protect that machine. Okay, so that's the tin preparation and bench assembly for 9760 or 9650, that, uh, that group of, of John Deere combines. I always tell everybody at the, at the end of these videos that I can't guarantee you'll never have a fire in the combine because there's too many things that can cause a fire, such as an alternator that throws sparks or a hot bearing or an electrical short or a rock or something like that, but uh, but this will stop those chronic smolders that occur at the exhaust system from a crop such as sunflowers or safflower or sometimes canola or peas. So good luck with your installation. You can always call me if you do have trouble with it. Uh, the other thing that varied on this combine or these combines was what was underneath this flange. I don't have um, for certain here how to how to hold that flange down once you get this on it really doesn't want to move but it'd be nice to pin this flange down on some of the installations I was able to pull a bolt here sometimes there's a, a place like here where we might have a bolt that we can pull and and put this underneath it and then put the bolt to pull it back down others actually had holes that I could use here um, and I might have to cut a hole or cut a slot in the tin to fit around where I could put a bolt through what I did find is that between the 50 series and the 60 series, they used the same engine, but they didn't seem to be the same along here. There, there was, they weren't completely uniform, so they made changes in the engine or the head or the valve cover or whatever that thing is on the top of there. Um, and so I didn't try to, I can't make it accommodate everyone here. The other thing I did on some of them was to take a tab of uh, waste steel or metal it could be from the kit or it could be from s somewhere else and I and I made kind of a little clamp a piece that would uh, fit underneath a bolt uh, that's nearby and then push down on this so it was bent to to when you tightened it down on it with the bolt and the, the tail of it or the L L shaped end of it pushed down on this to hold this bracket these some of these tabs in place um, you may need to do that and find some way to pinch that down a little bit or use existing bolts that are there for you. It was just that there was so much variation in these that I can't predict exactly what yours is going to look like and know exactly how to, to accommodate that on here. Now you only need one or two places where you hold that down. The rest of the thing is so wound up around the exhaust system that it's not going to go anywhere. And then this is where we're going to bring the air into the enclosure. when we come up from the left here and we'll come in over here and then make a 90 degree turn and go in there when we uh, bring the air lines in to supply that cool air, or clean air into this enclosure. So I hope that helps you with the preparation of the tin set for this and I'll try to get it posted right away so that you can see that. Good luck.